This week's review is of a sometimes overlooked lightweight bullpup that has all the same benefits of a full-size rifle, but in a super compact form. The Walther Rain 2. Hello and welcome to AAR on Air and today it's the much awaited and often overlooked, wrongly I would say, Walther Rain 2. So has it changed radically? No. Why would you make a huge changes to an already successful platform? So the changes are, on the face of it, quite slight. Firstly though, let's take a bit of a walk round for those who don't know the rain and highlight the changes as we go. Stats first. The rain 2 is 66 and a half centimetres long or around 26 and a quarter inches, which is slightly shorter than the original due to the removal of the shroud from around the barrel. This has been replaced with a muzzle brake which is likely to be removed and replaced with a suitable silencer, as was the norm even with the shroud fitted on the Mark I. Only now the overall length is kept down to help keep its bullpup short stance. The weight on this is slightly more than the first rain due to a change of internal air cylinder to give it a more stable and balanced feel to it, but it still tops the scales at a lightweight 2.99 kilograms or 6 pounds 9 ounces, making this an all day carry around when out pest controlling. It has a hard polymer outer shell that covers all the internals and gives it its rather individual shape and design, but also gives it a hard wearing, wipeable finish that is not cold to the touch on, well, inclement days, and it has the stippling effect in the right places, i.e. the forestop and the grip. It is really rather short in design, but has a long barrel length of some 500 millimeters, which continues all the way to the rear, ending in the magazine housing. Now, when companies try to do this design on the cheap, it usually results in the bolt or side lever being so far back you need to be a bit of a contortionist to cock the gun and need to be doubly careful if you don't load part of your earlobe in the process. No such thing with the rain. It has a forward, super smooth side lever, which is also changeable from right to left to suit either a right-handed shooter or simply a shooter's individual preference. This isn't particularly a difficult task to do either, but if in doubt, ask your retailer to do this for you at the point of sale. If they're any good, this should be no problem for them at all. The stock is completely ambidextrous and must be said is really very comfortable to use. The filler port is just at the side of the very clear and easy to read air gauge or manometer and comes supplied with a dust plug and of course the required probe. The maximum working pressure is a fairly healthy 232 bar or 3300 psi. The air cylinder which is under that hard body is where they have increased that front weight slightly and it is in its petite guise good for around 150 shots due in part to the onboard regulator. This is of course caliber and power dependent as far as shot count is concerned but hopefully gives you a bit of a guide figure. The top rail on this is Picatinny for your scope and there is a smaller underside one for toys or a bipod. This top rail is interchangeable with an optional dovetail rail if you prefer. Although most companies do seem to be moving towards the Picatinny rail these days. The trigger is a two-stage item and has a safety just 
above, which is simple and efficient, push from the right to left to drop into fire, and left to right to drop into safe. This has a red indicator to show you when in fire mode and has a very reassuring click to it. The trigger is adjustable, but it does require the removal of that hard body to, able to be able to access the adjustment. Let's take a closer look at loading the magazine, which is very, very simple to do. It is very simple in design, and it is simply a case of drop in your first pellet, turn to the next hole, drop in your second pellet, head first of course, and just keep doing so until you're all full. This will take 11 rounds in this 177 calibre version. When they're all loaded up, then pull back on your side lever and slot in the magazine from either the right hand side or the left hand side, depending on whether you're shooting left or right handed. There is an arrow on the side of the magazine to make sure that that is always pointing forwards. Side lever back in when you're ready to go. It does come in 2.2 calibre and the magazine capacity on that is around 10 rounds. And there is also a 2.5 calibre with a capacity of 9 rounds. The next thing really is to get this over the chronograph to see what its power output is. Now, as a sweeping statement before I do so, my findings have always been that the rain is never low on power and is often very close to the sub 12 foot pound UK limit. Very close. So, loaded up with some 8.44 grain JSBs to start with, it saw 781 feet per second, which is 11.43 foot pounds or 15.5 joules. Well, not content with that, I loaded it up with some 10.34 grain JSBs. It saw 722 feet per second, which is 11.97 foot pounds or 16.23 joules. As I said, never normally low on power when these produce it. Let's get a scope on this one then, shall we, and get it out on the range. Now, this Mark II came with a scope in the review package. This was a Richter optic scope in 4x32 magnification. And I must be said, it's a pretty little budget scope and it was actually pretty good with its ability to focus down to very short distances, which would make it ideal for some close quarter pest control. But I wanted to stretch this rain out a little further, say 40 meters. So I dropped on a Veyron scope to give it and me a better chance of success. Here goes then, 40 metres out on the range. Walther A Mark II M2 version 2. I've shot before with the, um, uh, with the version 1 and thoroughly enjoyed it. It's an odd looking thing, I uh, must admit, and it's always been a bit of an odd looking thing to me, but as soon as you get it in your hand and you hold it, it's really nice and tight in, it's comfortable, it is lightweight, it's a little heavier now than the stated figures because I've just popped a scope and a silencer on the end, but it's still short, very short, and compact, still well balanced. It's a nice piece of kit, it's made with that hard casing, outer casing, everything is enclosed within it. The magazine is simplicity itself to actually load and normally these things are pretty accurate. Notice I say normally, it's a nice day, it's threatening rain so we're going to try and get on with it fairly quickly and there's a bit of a breeze which normally comes in just before it starts <laughs> raining. So I'll get on and see how we go. I've zeroed it very quickly out at 40 metres on this one, 177, let's have a go.
Yeah, there's definitely a breeze. Definitely a breeze. So we're going through the same hole at the moment. Oops, that was me. That's it, we're out. A couple of wayward shots there, which is entirely me, and we've got a fair breeze going off. But other than that, it when it's allowed to do what it's allowed to do, it's settling it really nice and tight group. Bit of a calmer day and taking a little bit more time. It, this is a well capable and accurate little gun. Carry it around all day. It's not heavy. Yeah, really capable little gun. It does get overlooked and I don't know why. Back to the studio. Well, I can't say I'm surprised at the results. The rain is normally an accurate little bullpup. The extra weight has made it that slight bit more stable, a tool for the job. And I'm quite satisfied with those results, considering it was a windy day. I must say the Walther Rain 2 has kept itself true to the rain design and its capability. It retails out at around £765 UK, which maybe puts it in a few other mid to higher end gun brackets, but it does hold its own and has that lighter carry around all day element to it. And of course, that hard wearing wipeable shell, which does make this a very viable option out in the field. I have enjoyed getting my hands on this, one of the first ones out in the country, thanks to Bisley and the guys and girls at Vector Air for getting hold of it. Hopefully you've enjoyed this look at the new Rain 2. If you have, please give us the old thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Feel free to share and don't forget to click the alarm notification bell. Don't forget there's the new AAR on Air news channel that is starting up. So please take a look at that and subscribe when you get there. Check out the forums and chats and all the usual stuff. There's the AAR on Air website for merch, that side, <laughs> etc. A big thank you as always to Vector Air and above all, a, a huge thank you to you guys for watching and for your continued support. Stay safe and shoot safe, and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.